inside Oswego Speedway from August 17th. We'll get started with the Pathfinder Bank SBS main event, 30 laps presented by Oswego County Federal Credit Union and Bosco and Gears Food Market. And starting up there in row number one were four Sevens Motorsports teammates, Johnny Tesserario in the 47 and Mike Bond in the 74. Bond starting on the outside of row number one by virtue of that tough flip he had down the back straight away just one week ago, the handicap position putting him up there on the outside of row number one, and he jumped out into the early race lead. But just as we completed lap number one in this one, caution lights would come on for the driver of the Longley Brothers Dodge car number nine. That is Jack Patrick as he would take a hard ride into the inside hub rail. As you get a look at the replay, contact from the outside of the racetrack sends him across the nose of the A.J. Burnish number 24, and Jack, no doubt, done in this one, continuing an up and down season. He had picked up the main event win just one week ago, but this week would end in corner number one. When the green lights came back on, Bond picked up right where he left off, nearly grabbing about a half a straightaway lead here in just a lap or so after the green flag came back out. Further on back, a good battle was shaping up between your defending Pathfinder Bank SBS Series champion Craig Harrith, as well as the 98 of Jason Simmons, and the 13, your current championship point leader, Russ Brown. Well, further back up front with Bond out of the picture, J.J. Andrews made a low side move on the 86 of Brian Haynes. To move into position number three, Haynes in the Hedger Racing Chassis 86 car with his best run by far of his career, running up there in position number four for the majority of this event. Andrews now would try and reel in and get by the 47 of Tesserario for the runner-up spot. Tried to look to the low side there in corner number one, thought better of it, and tucked it back into line as Tesserario doing all he can right now to try and hang on to that second position. As Brown, Apt, Harris, and now Dalton Doyle would all do battle down the front straightaway and into corner number one. Andrews still continuing to work the back bumper of the 47 of Tesserario, but further back still, Russ Brown trying to make his way through the field. Now onto the outside of the 57 of Danny Apt, and you can move Brown now up into the top five as Mike Bond continues to run away with this one in the number 74 machine. First through fifth now, pretty much right there in line. Tesserario second, Andrews third, Haynes in fourth, Brown in fifth as Russ continuing to try and find a way by that car as the 4 of Craig Harris would lose it out of corner number two. Andrew Shartner with nowhere to go would stop on the back straightaway and then Scott Schaefer in the 76 car comes in and tags Shartner hard in the left rear corner. Shartner initially would get out of the race car look to be done for the night, but he would go back to the pit lane, hop back in that car and jump back into the feature go. Green lights back on one more time. Bond continues now. He's got about a straightaway lead on second, third, fourth, and fifth. But the fourth place position was about to change hands as Brown again would pull down to the low side, moving up yet one more position here in the late going of this 30 lapper. But out in front, leading every lap of this one will be Mike Bond, grabbing his second win of the 2013 racing season over his teammate John Tesserario, J.J. Andrews, Russ Brown, and Brian Haynes with a great top five finish in the number 86 machine as Brown comes down to give the high sign to Bond as he pulls into Turning Stone Resort and Casino Victory Lane for the second time this season. No, I guess that's what a flip will get you. I got to first I got to thank my guys. We worked our butts off this week to get this back together. Boy, and it ran flawless tonight. And I got to thank Dees Merrill. She gives me everything I need. My wife, I'm with Dan Denny, the FFE guys, everybody in the garage, and all my sponsors, and Steve's Mays. Uh, CP Electric, Millennium Music. I just got to thank them guys for sticking with me, Pathfinder Banks, and just thank all the help this week. Yeah, I think he's got it pretty well sewn up. Russ is a great guy, love the race with him. Them guys actually gave me a bumper last week so I could race, so I thank them for that, and everybody else that gave me some parts. And it was just a long week, and I guess it paid off. Uh, getting back together, the car was going good. It was actually real quick tonight, at the beginning of the night. Um, unfortunately, we had a bad mishap down in turn four, uh, beginning of the heat race. Got the car back out, it felt all right, went up with the feature, and Mike just had a better car, faster car, and you know, had to hold on for whatever I could for a second. Uh, JJ's got a little crush on me, you know, he just wanted to run into me a little bit, but you know, that's part of the race, and I guess I'll get over it. I roughed him up a little bit, I wore his bumper out, there's probably a hole in his bumper a little bit, but I didn't, I didn't turn him or anything. Um, 
<laughs> John ran good. He did what he had to do. He, his car was off a little bit, but but uh, he did a perfect job driving it. Uh, it, it it's just a tough race. It's frustrating because I, I felt like I was faster, but faster doesn't mean you can pass the guy. I imagine Mike was gone. I couldn't see him because I was too busy staring at, at the 47, but uh, he was probably gone. I don't know if I had anything for him or not, but it would have been nice to get the second, at least get a sandwich with these four seven cards, but, but uh, third is good. Third is good at this point in the season, no wreck. Inside Oswego Speedway is brought to you by Novellus, not just aluminum, Novellus Aluminum. Pathfinder Bank, local community trucks. Eagle Beverage, we bring the beer to you. Oswego Bike Fest, riding, rocking and racing Oswego Speedway. And by Best Western Plus, quality Inn and Suites of Oswego. Well, the final event of the night at the Speedway would be the 50-lap Novella Supermodified Oswego County Federal Credit Union Bosco and Gears main event with Keith Champagne and Sean Goslin out there on row number one. Remember, Goslin got his first career win in the Novella Supermodified ranks just one week ago, and he would get the start on the outside of the front row here in this one, and he would quickly jump out into the early lead over Timmy Snyder and Dave Gruel, who wasted little time moving up into the second and third positions. And Snyder and Gruel would battle back and forth for some 20 laps in this one with Keith Champagne running fourth early on. But unfortunately, the driver out of Cornelius, North Carolina, would put his hand in the air down the front chute, allowing Dave Danzer and the rest of the field to stream on by. Champagne heading to the pit lane in the Chris Osetic owned and built car number 55. As the race carried on, you could see Goslin built over a full straightaway advantage on the field in the Greens Alehouse, car number 26, as Gruel continued to try to work his way by the zero hero of Timmy Snyder as they made a little bit of contact there out of corner number four. Gruel would tuck it back into the third spot. But remember, we had a battle for the championship going on this night as well between Otto Sinderley and Joe Gosick, but they would both wind up in the foam in the outside of corner number three. Gozik would go to the pit lane for repairs, was not able to return to the action. Sitterly would do the same, but was able to get back on the racetrack and rebounded for an outstanding seventh place finish. On the restart, Gruel got the edge he needed, ducking to the inside of Snyder out of that second corner to take over the runner-up position, and Snyder would push high going into corner number three, leaving the door open for Dave Danzer in the 52 car to slip his way into the third spot, coming down that front stretch and into corner number one. Snyder now would run in front of Bellinger in the 02 and Michael Muldoon in the 51 as Muldoon dives to the inside in corner number one to take over position number five from Bellinger as they roll down the back straightaway and into corner number three as now Pat Lavery and Bob Bond join the action in the 22 and 47. Laps continuing to tick away, Goslin running away from the field. Dave Danzer knew he needed to make quick work of the gruel number 50 if he had any chance to try and chase down your race leader, and eventually he would do so, pulling up into position number two. Further on back, Snyder, Muldoon, Lavery, and Bond would put on a great battle for a series of laps in this one. As Lavery works to the low side of Muldoon into corner number three, trying to leave the lane open on the inside for Bond in the 4.7's Motorsports car number 47. Lavery, after slipping on by Muldoon, would next dive under Snyder, and Bond, doing what he does best, would follow through on the low side as Lavery and Bond pick off two cars in one lap. Their moves, however, would prove to be too little too late, though, as Goslin continued to charge on out in front, and for two consecutive weeks, 100 consecutive laps led for Sean Goslin. He gets win number two at Oswego Speedway. Coming across the stripe ahead of Danzer, Gruel, Lavery, Bond, Michael Muldoon would hang on for that sixth position ahead of Otto Sinterley, Timmy Snyder, Brandon Bellinger and Jerry Kern in the nuclear banana car number 24 would round out the top 10. As Goslin pulls down into Turning Stone Resort and Casino Victory Lane, he would talk with Danny Kapasinski. Kind of living a dream right now. I can't believe it. Again, uh, you know, the starting spot helps a lot. Um, but the, the guys gave me a really good car tonight. Last week, I was just holding on and tonight I felt like I could actually go and, you know, actually run the car hard so you know hats off to the guys again this is uh they're the reason that we're up here yeah you know just trying to uh you know stay in the groove and uh you know try not to think and just you know you know keep your momentum going and uh you know this is awesome i can't believe it this is this is crazy you know i just 
you know, I, there's all these things I wanted to say last week and I forgot to say it, you know, we're just, we're so lucky to have this track and these cars and, and these fans. Uh, that's the reason we're here and I just, uh, you know, I can't say enough for the track and, and just the competitors, you know, that come out here every week. I'm glad, uh, glad tonight wasn't a very rough race, you know, uh, we got the classic two weeks, so um, hope that's a good show. I think so, I mean, I slowly see him getting closer and closer and this car for some reason isn't very good off the rear go, but at the end it's it's really good. It never loses speed, so I slowly gain on him. I just need probably a caution. I think I would have had something for him. But it was a good around for Sean, two in a row. Congratulations to him. Dave was good around Snyder, but as soon as he got around Snyder, it seemed like he loosened right up pretty good. And I mean, uh, I didn't want to get into him. I tried to work him as clean as possible, but uh, I like racing him. I race with him in the small blocks. He's a great guy and it's fun to race against them. Yeah, I still thought I had some left, and <laughs> when I tried using it, there wasn't much there. I took a lot to get around Snyder. He's a hard car to pass, good competitor. And uh, I mean, geez, I spent probably a good 20, 22 laps trying to get around him. Once I got around him, I saw Sean on my sights, and I started reeling him in a little bit. And, uh, and then the car just started going away about lap 30, started losing forward by So we changed some stuff last week to uh, try to pick up and um, get the car going a little bit quicker and um, I think we've got to switch it back for that especially for the classic coming up here in two weeks.